welcome back to Unity Pastors in Depth. I'm telling you, you always love to hear what Big Girl got going on with different pastors and preachers, teachers in the city. I got another great woman of God. She is Dr. Sandra Anderson. She has a school, APAC School of Theology. I want you to hear more about it. I want to say, Dr. Anderson, welcome to Unity. Thank you so much, Pam. Now, how did you get into having your own school? I technically don't have my own school. I technically run a school. Okay. I was unemployed. I got fired from my job at Beacon University, and they were dealing with accreditation issues. And so once I got fired, I had to find a job of like kind, being a female in theology. There were no jobs in Columbus, Georgia. Huh. So I got on the internet and I started looking for tracks accredited schools. I found Apex. And the late Archie Logan, Dr. Archie Logan, gave me an opportunity to teach. And he said, you can do your own site. You can do your own site. See, see. And so I stepped out on faith. I had two students, my husband, my late husband, and a friend of mine. They came aboard as students for me, and it became word of mouth out of my house until 2010 when we took it to Buena Vista Road in our church, and then we took it to our new church location at 430 11th Street, and it outgrew that location, and then we found a home at the old radio station on 13th Street, and it's been successful and it's growing rapidly. Wow, so okay, so you are in charge of a school. I am in charge, I, I, I'm an independent kind of, uh, independent contractor, but I am the director, not the founder okay. of Apex School of Theology. And we're the Georgia Alabama Learning Center. Let me ask you this: Did you all have the million dollar question? Did you always see yourself going into ministry? Oh no! Well, how did you get there? No, I, I got saved in prison. Wait a minute! <laughs> oh, you done stopped prison. the host. You got saved. Wait a minute. Hold up. Prison to theology school. Yes. Wait a minute. Give me this transition. I am a city girl. I'm not from the south. I was raised in uh, by not moral people. Okay. I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I grew up around drunks and liars and tricks and crackheads. And even in that environment, God had plans to prosper me. I came to Georgia by way of the military. I didn't even want to come to the South. And when I came here, I came here with a bag of tricks, a forgery, a theft, all kind of crimes that I was committing. And it, it dated back to the fact that I lost my left hand at the age of 19, and I really was angry with God. And so I used every, everybody else's money to adorn myself. I didn't feel good unless I had the things that I thought life owed me for this tragedy. Well, by the time I got um, to Georgia, I believe my steps were ordered by the Lord. I got to Georgia, and for the first time in my life, I started getting arrested. And the Bible said the pleasures of sin is for a season. And that's true. And when that season is over, you're not going to get an email, a text message. God's just going to shut the heavens and the grace up on that thing. And that's what he did in my life. I got arrested in 1995. I, went, I was sentenced to prison, but I didn't go. And I got out, and I left God right in prison. You know, I, I was chain gang. I was a jailhouse religion. And um, I'm one of the reasons why people don't believe people who've been incarcerated can be saved. And so in 1998, I was working at Kegel's. I got arrested for theft and forgery, and I couldn't make bond, and I had to go to prison. Once I got in prison, I got on my knees and prayed and asked God to save me. And I said, if you're real, save me. While serving my prison sentence, I was saved. My youngest son, Lorenzo, died. Mm. He was age 10 as a result of a heart attack and asthma attack. My condolences. And that forever impacted my life. Thank you so much. It forever impacted my life. I said, you know what, Eve, I'm going to be real, I'm not. And when I came out of prison, I felt led by God to go to a theological school, and I presented myself at Beacon University, and they denied me the first time. And I, 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 when I went back, they allowed me to come, and I worked very, very hard. 2001 is when I went into the school. I worked uh, overload in my classes, studies. I graduated in... 2004 with my bachelor's of biblical studies, I graduated with honors. 2006, I graduated with my master's of art in biblical studies, I graduated with honors. 2007, I graduated with my master's of divinity 
I graduated with honors, and then I went to Liberty University. And while I was working on my doctor degree, the last semester, getting ready to defend, my husband passed. And I didn't even think I was going to complete that degree. And, and I this had, was when your husband passed? He passed in 2010. I thought. Yeah, right after we started to took the school out of our home. And mm. I didn't think I was going to make it through. That was the dark, darkest time in my life. We had started a ministry. Everything was good. God had healed our marriage. Uh, our ministry was up and growing. We had found a new building. Everything was right in my life. So now you're doing all this on your own, you and God. Me and God. And I have an awesome team of people who push me and support me in everything that I do. You know, I'm looking at you. <laughs> My mouth is just like, ooh. Yeah, we did a show like this before where the pastor talked about some of the things he went through. But I can tell for you, you had a turning point oh, in yes. your life that oh, yes. propelled you to the next level. Yes. And I, I'm just wow. a vessel of his grace. Nothing great. A lot of times when you see a female who's in theology, people are already, ooh. They do. Yeah, but I didn't set out to be uh, this great theologian. God told me I was Dr. Anderson before I even got saved. Oh, you even knew it. Mm -hmm. you I thought like I was Mo a medical doctor. You like Moses. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I was a medical doctor. I went and signed up for some medical classes and failed all of them. Mm. But he still called me to be Dr. Anderson. You are an amazing woman. Thank you so much. God is amazing, God. Well, tell people, I, I've got to go to commercial break, but I, again, I want you to come back. Yes, ma'am. There's, there, there's like, there's a side two, three, or four All right. <laughs> behind this. But i got to go to commercial break. But tell them how they can go to your school, because I had someone text me. Apex School of Theology, Georgia, Alabama Learning Center, 1353 13th Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, right across from WRBL. And how can they contact you? They can contact us. Oh, they can contact us at 706-221-5358. Uh, well, Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for doing my thank show. Thank you. I got to go to commercial break, and then I'm coming back with Pastor Gwen Rogers. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeems at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. The moral decline of television is evident every time you touch the remote. We've gone from happy days to anger management, from Father Knows Best to RuPaul, the flying nun to 16 and pregnant. There's a battle for your family, and CTN is fighting to shine the light of Jesus into the television of every home. Join with us by grabbing your cell phone and texting the letters CTN to 20222 to donate $10 to CTN. We're viewer supported, so join the fight for the family. Text CTN to 20222 you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Hello, welcome back to Unity Pastors and Dance. I have another great friend. She takes care of doing my set. She's the one that keeps it looking so girly for big girl. Now, I'm the town girl, but Pastor Gwen going to make sure Pam looks cute. And I want to go ahead and say, welcome to Unity. It's so good to be here. Tell my people, you talk about decorating when you was, me and you share off camera. And you talk about decorating is a ministry for you. How'd you get started in that? Well, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to make it short. Okay. And I just love to, I just very got a very creative mind. Have a very creative mind. I've been had a very creative mind ever since I was little. I can take something simple and make something beautiful out of it. You know, how? Cause me, I'm such a Tom girl. If I'm doing a TV show, I'm, I'm gonna hook it on up. But outside of that, if it stay one way, it's one way with Pam. But you and my sister, y'all can take, see, trash on the side of the road, 
spray paint that sucker and it looking cute. How do you make things look cute? It's just a gift that God has given to me. God has given that gift and he had put it in my spirit. And uh, it seems like I'm just not happy unless I'm doing something. You do know? you see the beauty in something? Once you see it, it's just, it just flows out of you into transforming something? I exactly don't know exactly how it's going to look. I just follow the spirit of the Lord tell me to do and okay. do that. And then before I know it, then there it is. So you just took this pink fabric, put yeah. the lace. Well, you tell them what they're saying. I'm just okay. It. It's a overlays. Okay. The overlays in the uh, table runner. Now, which one's the overlay? Because big girl has no clue what that this is. This the overlay is the big table. This right here is the overlays. Okay. And this right here is the table runner. Oh. Okay. And then the flower arrangement in the camera. Now, do you make your own arrangements? Or I make my own flowers arrangement, and um, I can do different styles, and I have many different colors to make your wedding or whatever your special occasion look beautiful. Okay. Now, is there any certain stores you pick, or you just go to any of them? Well, I don't really have a certain stores that I pick to, to get my supply. I order it online. Okay. Uh-huh, and some of them I make myself. I sew it myself. Now, so. you decorate on top your pastor as well at Faith right. and Hope Church of Deliverance. Now, how do you have time to do event planning and pastor, too? Well, it, And your wife, too? Yes, I am a wife. And grandmama. And grandmama. How do I have the time? Well, the strength of the good Lord that gives me time. I make time for what I love to do best. What you love to do best, you make time for it. And it's become a joy in your life. You can't help but to make time for it. And I get my joy, enjoyment about decorating and doing the will of God. I can tell. Just seeing people look at the art that you've done to make a plain set look so pretty. You even, If we wasn't sitting in the chairs, these folding chairs don't look like folding chairs. I'm going to tell you right now. You even put the covers over them with the cute little bows. Right. And got a whole, I would say a whole warehouse full of stuff. Yes. How long did it take you to accumulate all the stuff, and where did you go to get everything you got? Well, I still started from scratch, and um, when the vision uh, came to me, I just started from scratch just buying stuff. I, went, I go to a lot of yard sales. Okay. I go to a lot of Goodwills, and then I just start ordering online. And then when I order online, I, I found people that have weddings and they selling their stuff. So that's how you do it. Yeah, but most most of my stuff is ordered directly from the wholesale factory, different wholesale place. One thing I forgot to tell people: this woman is a awesome cook. Oh, I mean, she did. did. We did an evening out with, with the clergy at my father's church, and let me tell you, Pastor Quinn, oh we, she cooked some meatballs, she cooked some wings. And I saw the sauce from where they were. <laughs> but that that tasted good. Because somebody said at the show, said that woman put her foot in it. Yeah, I love to cook too. That's uh, one of my main hobbies. I love to cook. I'm a type of person that I, I'm going to feed you if I don't do nothing else. I'm going to make you look good, and I'm going to make sure you're well fed. All right. Well, Pastor Quinn, tell people where they can find your church at and the hours of well, operation? We have service on Wednesday, Bible study starting at 7 o'clock, and then we back again Friday for Joy and Prophecy on, on Friday at 7 o'clock, and then we back again on Sunday at 12 o'clock for our, our, noon, our noonday worship service. And we have moved to 3658 Casita Road. How can they contact you? Um, my contact number is 706-393- Six three eight nine. Well, we're going to commercial break. Then we're coming back with more guests on Unity Pastors and Zell. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeans at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com.
The moral decline of television is evident every time you touch the remote. We've gone from happy days to anger management, from Father Knows Best to RuPaul, The Flying Nun to 16 and Pregnant. There's a battle for your family, and CTN is fighting to shine the light of Jesus into the television of every home. Join with us by grabbing your cell phone and texting the letters CTN to 20222 to donate $10 to CTN. We're viewer supported, so join the fight for the family. Text CTN to 20222 you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Hello, welcome back to Unity Pastors in Death. I have a great friend with me, been knowing him for years since I was in middle school. I don't think neither one of us ever thought we'd be where we're at today. His name is Minister Freddie Lane of Move of God Ministries, one of my folk. I want to go ahead and say welcome to Unity. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I let the cat out the bag. We've been knowing each other since way... Well, that means you're old. Well, I'll be 40 this year. I had no problem wow. telling my age. It's been Can a while. Can you tell yours? I'm 42. Okay, yes, you can. How do you get to be a preacher now? If you had told me 20 years ago that I would be preaching the gospel, I would have laughed at you. And underneath my father, that I wouldn't have believed it. And he's rubbed off on me so much. Um, I'm becoming, becoming unorthodox like he is. <laughs> it is it, it's a blessing, though. It is. I um, My mom's God-fearing woman. You know, she's passed on. My condolences. But she is the reason, one of the reasons. Um, it was six of us, all boys. And she instilled in us the peace and the triumph of Christ in her life. And that just transposed over into mine. So. Your mother was in the church. I can still see her. Mama, she was such a God-fearing woman. Yeah, she, she is something special. Her birthday is coming up. So I will, me and my brothers will remember her. You know, because she done an excellent job raising six boys. If we made mistakes, that was on us, not her. Mm -hmm. you know, and to God be the glory, because I, I I was not always a nice fellow. You? I, I was not always. Elaborate on that. Um, growing up in Wilson Apartments, okay. um, we grew up in the hood, and, you know, sometimes we did things that just weren't right. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't always the the man you see before before you. That's how I know that God can do some miraculous things. By his grace, I'm not dead. By his grace, I haven't killed anybody. Um, some guys I know that I grew up with, life in prison, dead. Young fellow that got killed a couple of weeks ago, well, last week, a friend of mine I know, knew very well. His hand of protection is on my life, you know, and I have to thank him for that. You know, as, as you minister to people, do you feel like when you minister, you're giving back to people? Because you can hear that personal testimony ringing out of you. So as you minister, you feel like you you got to do this so that somebody else does not end up where I'm at. I believe that when, when God delivers you out of something. You feel like you owe it? He does not deliver you for you. For one, he's going to get the glory. And for the next young man, or young lady who goes through what I've been through, I can help them. That's my charge, to help the next generation. And anybody I come in contact with who knows me know that I'm always having fun. Um, I'm kind of like Paul, you know, remove this thing from my side, and God said, my grace is sufficient. So I'm, I'm at peace, no matter what the situation. You know, I've been delivered from people. You know, I don't care what you think or what you say. My God is able to do exceedingly above anything you ask. So I just believe that um, it's my charge to um, help somebody. So you feel it's your charge. I say owe it. You feel it's your charge. And you feel like you you feel you are delivered from people. Do you feel that you know you've been delivered from people? I know. Because Why? Because How can you minister to people and then feel like you... Or delivered from people, or is this? When I say a, I'm delivered from it's people, different. it's a difference. I'm delivered from people 
um, expectations of you or something? My, their expectations, their put downs, their qualifications, the titles they label me with. I'm a minister, yes. Okay. But there's no title that's going to send anybody to heaven. Okay. We as men and women of God have to meet them where they are. I can't minister to someone about having the lights cut off if I've never been in the dark. I can't minister to someone about being hungry knowing that God will send somebody to feed you if I've never been hungry. Okay. It was six of us, all boys. My mom and dad did the best they could, but we grew up in Wilson Apartments and sometimes it got tough. Mm -hmm. So these are things that I've been through. And it, it's my charge to, for the next young man who has a family who's just starting out. Minister Lane is tough, man. It is tough. But I know someone who can deliver you. I know someone who will keep you. I know someone who will feed you when nobody else will. I'll bring you to my house. If you need to sleep on the floor, i let you sleep on the floor. i let you sleep on the couch. I don't have a lot, but what I have, if you're in need, I got you. You sound like a man that just has not forgot where he's come from. I can't. I can't. You know, I, I listen to you talk, and, you know, we have our personal testimonies of, of where we come from and where we're going. You know, some, some people forget. I'm mm -hmm. just going to be honest with you. Some people, once they arrive, they've arrived. They're not thinking about nobody else. But I don't understand how can you do that? How can you feel like you've arrived when you really you never do? And when you're in this life of Christ, it's, it cannot be about you. That's the big, there's a song, Not About Us. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. And once you die to self, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. He gave. You cannot be a Christian and not give something. He gave his son so that we could be redeemed. I got to love. We're called to love regardless. The ones that spitefully use you, you got to love them. Yes, you do. You have to love them. And, and that's my own personal testimony. There are people who don't like me for whatever reason. I'm going to pray for you and keep going. But it, it, it does my heart good to, to minister to people, to love people. Um, you've been knowing me a long time. Yeah. And, and I love being around people. You know, and, and I believe that I'm where God intended for me to be. I really believe that. And he's going to honor that. You know, I say you where you're supposed to be. I'm glad you move with God. One thing I want people to know, as I said, this man is a Christian comedian. People, y'all just don't know about Freddie Lane. Freddie Lane, he does this great impersonation of Mr. Brown. And if anybody mm -hmm. knows Tyler Perry, tell him if you ever need a fill-in for the man that mm -hmm. does Mr. Brown, he's don't right here. Don't do not do don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Call him. That's all I'm going to say. Just call him. Why is it that you, my dad's like that. Why is it that you like making people laugh so much? Because laughter is good medicine. If you give people the opportunity to laugh, give people the opportunity to feel good, they forget about some of the troubles they have, True. if only for a moment. And, and I think once that laughter has eased some things, you get a chance to minister to people, to, what, to their hurt, to their need. Um, and people need to know that laughter is okay. It is. Sometimes we're so religious and so structured that we can't have any fun. You know, I think God intended for us to have fun, not to go out and do anything crazy, True. but to have fun. You know? Well, I've got to close my show out, but tell people how they can contact you. You can contact me at the Move of God Ministry. You can call me on my personal number. I don't know if I should give it out, but I'm going to give it out anyway. 706-464-1212. Minister Lane, I love you. Well, I want to tell you. Ms. Elaine, thank you so much for coming to Big Girl Show. Remember, show love in the community and pray for your pastor. Local Church Connection is an exciting new publication in the Columbus area. Local Church Connection is a magazine that offers free advertising to Christian churches. Our circulation is 10,000, and we're free to pick up at over 100 locations in Columbus, Harris County, and Phoenix City. Be on the lookout for our new March-April edition of Local Church Connection. 
For business or church advertising, contact Tricia Jeems at 706-244-6413. And check out our website at localchurchconnection.com. The moral decline of television is evident every time you touch the remote. We've gone from happy days to anger management, from Father Knows Best to RuPaul, the flying nun to 16 and pregnant. There's a battle for your family, and CTN is fighting to shine the light of Jesus into the television of every home. Join with us by grabbing your cell phone and texting the letters CTN to 20222 to donate $10 to CTN. We're viewer supported, so join the fight for the family. Text CTN to 20222 you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan.